So the bottom line that I want you to think about is, do we really want to regulate marijuana like alcohol? What this is showing is the age range, starting at age 12, here on the left, 13, 14, 15, all the way up to 65 plus. And this is the number, the percent of people, each of these ages, that used marijuana in the past month compared to the percent of people who used alcohol in the past month. I'm not sure that's going to get us where we want. So a number of the faculty in this room participated with us three years ago in trying to develop provisions that would be, that would try to think outside the box and try to begin to make sure that if a state legalizes, there are barriers put up that are impenetrable by the marijuana industry to um, market to kids in the way that tobacco and alcohol both do. The um, first three are outside of the box, either no advertising or counter advertising, which may be more effective. That would mean you would need to create a fund, preferably from the industry through a tax, to, and designate it and don't allow your colleagues in the legislatures to use it for anything else. <laughs> and designate it to, for counter-advertising if the Supreme Court would not uphold a complete ban. The second came from the uh, Campaign for Tobacco Free Youth, and I love this one. They actually had economists uh, calculate how much it would call, how much the tobacco industry could earn by calculating a child who started at age 12 or 13, became addicted, and became a lifetime user, and they added 10% to the, that amount, the total amount the industry could earn from starting a kid at age 12 or 13 or 14, and added 10% to that. And that became a fee imposed on the industry for every underage smoker. That's not a bad idea. That gets you 10% plus. <laughs> and maybe begins to ask the industry to behave responsibly. Why is it that we allow addictive drug industries to market to our kids and kill us? Why do they have the right to do that? And we don't have the right to fight back on an equitable basis. That's, that's something to think very seriously about. The third one is, let's tie legalization to an automatic repeal of legalization if underage use increases. That's a stick. What I'd like you guys to do is think about a carrot to go with that. Could we engage the industry in helping us not allow kids to use by giving them a tax break, but tying an increase in use to automatic repeal? Automatic repeal. What we want to do is make the industry become partners with us as opposed to all the behavior you have seen in this day from the alcohol and tobacco industry where, okay, you do this, we'll get around it this way. You're going to do this, we'll get around this way. Why not co-op the industry to work with us in a serious way? Fourth is no pro these are more traditional, no product placements. Don't let there be a sativa race car in NASCAR. Um, Five is an industry-financed fund for education, prevention, and treatment. Let the industry pay. Why should taxpayers pay to prevent and educate and treat the victims of marijuana use? Make the industry pay for that. Work that into in the way that the tobacco settlement did. Sixth, a state agency to tax and regulate. Thank you both. You've got that. Thank you for that. Licensed growers, distributors, and retailers, no drug driving. As we talked in the Colorado group this morning, the levels of impairment that have been established in Washington and Colorado are not science-based. Let's let the scientists tell us, when they can, what impairment is. Impairment. So meanwhile, do per se. Any amount of marijuana in the body of a driver indicates 
drugged driving. Until science changes that, don't, don't just arbitrarily set a level like the initiative in Washington did and like Colorado has uh, followed. Nine, no drugged employees or students. No, no, drug, no marijuana use on the job or impairment on the job or presence of marijuana in the body on the job or in school. And finally, smoke-free laws apply. Marijuana controlled by the FDA as tobacco is. And finally, please, Dr. Friedman told you how many studies are in the literature now about marijuana. How about we have a Surgeon General's report on marijuana health effects? So the scientists are telling us and telling the public through the Surgeon General, not the legalization proponents, what the health effects are. Thank you.